This is a 4.2 Industrial Revolution summary video. If you haven't already, please go and watch the full length 4.2 video that's also linked online. In Standard 4, we look at the causes and effects of the Industrial Revolution. In 4.2, we're going to get more in depth on the causes of the Industrial Revolution and how it all got started. During and after the Civil War, the U.S. entered a period of rapid economic growth that was in due part to government policies that contributed changes in the factors of production. And that means, like, factors of production mean land, labor, capital, technology, and entrepreneurship. We will start by looking at past industrial growth in the U.S. The role of the government, um, really the government promoted economic growth. The idea was that the government was laissez-faire, which means hands-off, but in reality, they actually did help the economy grow. Part of that was through the expansion west, where they opened up new land for development. And when they got that new land, there was also new natural resources out there, like coal and iron ore. The National Bank gave needed capital to businesses and regulated lending. The government also removed the Native Americans from the land, who threatened access to those natural resources, so the economy was able to grow because of those things. So those are changes in the factors of production. In the court case of Dartmouth versus Woodard, the Supreme Court upheld the decision of the sanctity of contracts, meaning that you had to follow contracts, and the ability of inventors to get patents. That means like if you come up with a new product, you can get a patent, which then protects you unless no one else, no one else can then have that same product. The national government also regulated interstate commerce and protected American businesses with a protective tariff like we talked about back in 1.6. There were also technological changes like the steam engine, which helped railroad, steamboat, and oil drilling, and these new technologies led to an increase in production. During the Civil War, Republican policies helped expand the economy. They gave land grants to railroads and settlers that moved west. They reorganized banking to provide a more secure financial climate. They gave out contracts that helped stimulate the economy to make different products for the war effort, like guns or clothes. They protected settlers in the West from Native Americans. They raised tariffs to help American businesses. The government took the side of businesses in their fights against labor unions. They'd always send in the army to help put down strikes. The Republicans also favored open immigration that would give businesses a large supply of workers. The more workers there are, the less they had to pay in wages. They restricted Chinese immigration through the Chinese Exclusion Act after the railroads were completed. They supported big business over workers. Prices were, auto, were also kept artificially high, so consumers were not helped in the end. So to summarize, these Republican governments during the Civil War and right after were very pro-business. As a result of the industrial growth, there's a surplus of goods, meaning there are a lot of goods out there, more goods than can be bought. This is going to cause the U.S. to look for more markets overseas so that we can trade with other countries to use up some of that surplus. This is going to lead to imperialism, which we will discuss in Standard Five. This concludes Standard 4.2. The next unit will look at some specific industrialists and some ways that they actually expanded. Uh, for now, though, go to Emoto to turn in the notes guide and take the video quiz. Thank you.